these brave Kerbals on the way to the man, safe in the knowledge that everything has been engineered for their safety. Hello guys, I'm Orbator, your Welsh engineer, and welcome to Kerbal Quest, Series 2, Part 24, Large Man Rover Landing. <laughs> yes, and as you can see, the pretty lead launches weren't that good. Anyway, here's me entering the launching, or the, the rover itself, and trying to think by here how am I going to land it, and it came to me. Why not put the engines underneath, underneath? Not like the last rover that we put the engines on top like a sky crane. Why not actually put the engines on the bottom and use them for the landing sequence? Because obviously we can't use a normal rocket. I'm going to launch this straight up, straight forward. Sometimes I have built bases like this and launched them as it is now, where it's horizontal. But I find that the, uh, the stresses on it can be enormous. Anyway, a tip for this, if you're going to do something like this, make sure that you move one of the rocket engines or the tanks, as, as I'm doing by here, to make sure the torque, if you've got the Kerbal Engine Redux, make that as close to zero as possible. And I found out that 0.20 kilonewtons per meter is quite right. Or just <laughs> the best I can get it on this. Anyway, let's go ahead, build a launcher for this, and as always, if you want to be a Kerbal, don't forget to write Kerbal in the comment below, otherwise I'll I'll miss your comment because I, that's how I filter the comments. Anyway, now that you've added your Kerbals in the comments below, there's another thing I also do. I read out the comments as well. So for the first comment, Louise Searcher. First, and again he says, also love your vids, and another comment, and third, and another comment, and fourth. Uh, I think this is cheating. He goes all the way up to 11th and he missed 10. <laughs> uh, how dare you? That's like a racing car going over the finish line, driving back, reversing, and driving over the finish line again. You do not get first and second place for that. You get disqualified. In fact, the first comment, if I disqualify you, it would be Finny Oinks, who replied to your comment, and he got a spam for <laughs> because he was replying the exact same message to all your comments, so <laughs> I had to unspam them, because I think he, he was just being sarcastic too. But anyway, as we can see, I'm engineering the rocket for our launch, and don't forget, you also have to take into account the torque for this as well, the launch vehicle. And I'm setting up asparagus staging. The best way to do an asparagus staging is set two rockets up, either boosting rockets either side, build them up, copy that rocket, and then place it on the second decouplers. So then, the idea being that two rockets, once they are empty, will decouple, leaving the other rocket tanks full because you're feeding the fuel, as I'm doing here, feeding fuel into one rocket and then feeding fuel into the center rocket. So then they are all fall after you decouple one of the rockets or the other. That's called asparagus staging. It means that you're losing weight, so you're gaining thrust to weight ratio, I think. Or at least you're getting the extra delta V. I don't think you get an extra thrust to weight ratio. No, in fact, you're getting less. I haven't worked out the thrust to weight ratio. I'm talking a bit of bollocks here. <laughs> anyway, by here I'm trying to decide what rocket engines we're going to use for these boosters. Because thrust to weight ratio is really key and these rockets are really low. So what we're going to have to do is probably use one of the stock engines. And I think it's the Rhino engine. Am I right in that or am I thinking of a different engine? Alright, it'll come to me in a moment. Anyway, another comment I suppose from Finny Oinks, his proper comment. Orbiter, maybe in the next episode you should capture a magical asteroid in 1.3 and build a base on it. Or something and yes I do some test launches as you can see Jebediah Bill and Bob are in the cockpit because they're doing their tests and things do not look stable I, I push ruts on those rockets those boosters for some reason they are not holding so either the struts are breaking or the Kraken's attacking I don't know what I do end up doing though, I use the internal strat, because I'm sure what you can do. But luckily the emergency ejection system works. The Kerbal survived. <laughs> I think it was more luck than anything. 
but I did install the Kerbal Parachute mod, in fact, and I don't think I used it at this point. So, yeah. I'll have to try that out one time. Anyway, let's get back to the comments. Finny Onks, yeah, he's... I think you kept saying about capturing a magical asteroid and building a base on it. I seen someone on YouTube doing that. Hmm, a big SSTO space plane builder. <laughs> yes, but I might do it. I've never captured a magical asteroid, so at least that'll be a new for me. And I've built a base around an asteroid before. Similar to what he's doing, it's sort of like squarish around it. But I sort of put angles in mine. It's on the Mind of the Man series, and I think I did complete it. I think. I know I didn't complete it the way I wanted to because I was rushing to get it finished to finish the Mind of the Man series. But yeah, that is what I did. And the frame rate on that asteroid base was terrible. And mine was bigger than his. <laughs> I had to say that. Anyway, let's talk space. What mods are you using? I'm using quite a few, and in fact, I forgot I was going to list the mods for you, and perhaps, um, I'm not sure, I haven't finished adding mods to this series, so there are a lot of mods I will be adding, but what you can see on this one, I've got the planetary base, Kerbal planetary base mod, I think that's what it's called, they are the modules on there that you can see that we've got the wheels attached to. It gives you those nice dome structures. The top one, obviously, is a coupler module. You can also use them to build rovers or just build bases. They are absolutely cool. They come with everything you need for career mode as well. So, yeah, it's a good mod to have. Also, for rovers, I use the Philly rover mod. Anyway, as we are transferring these kerbals on the way to the man, and checking for... Uh, I can't remember what I was doing here. Oh, yes. A handy thing to have is your burn time. But not just any one. Half burn time. Because that gives you the time to burn half before your actual burn. In other words, when you come into the node in 16 seconds. Well, it says 16.8 seconds. Node burn time, one half. Which means you have to burn... 16.8 seconds before the maneuver node. Now, obviously, I'm burning a little bit before, but I'm burning half burn so I can control my burn rate and hopefully get a good burn. By the way, the estimated burn, even on the one on the by the Napole or even the one in Kerbal Engine Redux, that is the instant amount of burn, instant delta V change. So it's not always 100%. So if you ever burn half before and half after your node and it's never 100% correct, that's because they're calculating instant burn changes, instant velocity changes, to be more exact. And that's impossible, in this, even in this game. Well, I suppose, unless you use cheats. And another little handy tip that I've done by you, I killed my maneuver node because I know that I'm going to still head in the right direction. All I have to do, as you see, MechJeb SAS, ASS on kill rotation. And that's keep me pointing in the right direction on the maneuver note while I'm still burning. And then I can just kill the node and slowly feather the throttle once we come for the encounter of the man to get the right altitude. Because I was think I was aiming for 100 km uh, apolapsis, so then I can get into a 100 km orbit and then plan my landing. And why have I chosen a high altitude around the moon? Well, it's simple, because you can come down more direct over your landing site. And because we want to do a precision landing, by the way, I didn't mention, we're going to land near the other rovers. And that's a handy thing with having rovers. If you're doing a precision landing and you're off by a couple of kilometers, you can drive over to the landing site. So that is good to have wheels in this case. Right, as we are getting into orbit, Minecraft Creeper says hi, love your vids, thank you very much. It's awesome. Trish Crab, whoa, this is cool video. Now I now I can see an efficient rocket designed to get to the moon. Keep it up, Orbiter. Oh yes, talk about efficient rocket designs, or sort of. I'm going to be doing a tutorial series. I was going to start off with sort of like complex things, how to build a space station and all that, because my tutorials need revamping. I decided to start from the basics, so even a newbie can get to grips with the game, 
but I'll be doing it all in sandbox so you have all the parts ready for you because I know uh, there's loaded out there about career mode basics from start to finish sort of thing but none on sandbox so people who don't want to do the career mode or the science and grind that with all the parts there I get this scratching their heads how do I do this how do I do that how do I get a magic boulder and build a base around it like Matt Lone well I'll tell you how you watch my series and you'll get to know how <laughs> anyway, Luke the Space Emperor says, Ooh, cool, I'm a Kerbal now. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Did you go through a DNA altering machine and be turned green? Two meters, well, one and a half meters tall, I think they are. I can't remember now. <laughs> With short hairstyle and big bobbly eyes? That is awesome. And Trish Cra Oh, no, it's right, right, yours. Dr. Dank Doritos. Those damn dong, dang dong, dong dang Doritos. <laughs> I have an idea for the future episode. Try to give the man its own man with an asteroid or something. <laughs> Everyone wants me to capture an asteroid. I'm assuming you all watch Matt Lowe. Don't worry, we'll get into it. And in fact, I might do this on Kerbal Quest anyway. But I'll also be doing it in the tutorials. Luke the Space Emperor also says you should build a floating moon base. <laughs> that would be hard. Unless you've got an atmosphere, that, that you can do. Ashman Play says Kerbal. Orbiter thanks you the bomb. That's after I said yes, no problem, I'll hurt you. Games met Anki Christianisan. <laughs> when you go going to do a mission, you know a with a rover on Duna. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. I want to build a large rover. A larger rover than this, by the way, to land on the man. I thought that would be a nice challenge, like larger than it. Perhaps even with stock parts. Perhaps I could do it and land it on Duna instead. It's a bit easier because you've got the atmosphere, you can use parachutes for landing. But I'll see what I can build. No promises, though. AV, the Minecrafter72 says, Can I be Kerbal? Yes, you can. And, oh my god, we survived the landing. In fact, I knew I could eventually get the launching done, even though it exploded several times. But I have to say that I thought we were going to crash miserably when we get to the man. Now, I knew I could get the rover to the man, but I thought the thrust to no, the torque would flip it out of control, and by here I'm trying to get the traction of the wheels properly. Well, at this point, I should have turned up the traction control, because yeah, trying to control this thing, it was rolling all over the place, especially on these slopes. They're not really steep slopes either. Unless you go to the crater sides, you know what I mean. But anyway. I eventually get this thing on its way towards the other rovers because they're about 1.4 kilometers away. So that's why this is at, I think, I can't remember. That's it, I just checked. It The video is at 2.3 speed. Yeah, it's mixed and stretched in Sony Vegas, so that is how I get these things, some of these videos to fit. Otherwise, this would have taken ages. Anyway, there's me trying to use the autopilot making sure we're not going to go too fast and on our way anyway from chris christos pratis is that right uh, pratis 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 <laughs> show us how to build this hmm good idea don't worry, in my basic tutorials, I'll be showing you how to build rovers, how to build the sky cranes, and all the jiggery pokery that I do to get all this stuff into orbit, landing on planets, even though the rockets themselves look crazy. Yeah, oh yes, another feature of this mod, planet based mod, you have these extendable base modules. And I thought, as someone suggested, as this guy is drinking a cup of coffee, enjoying his relaxing lunch. By the way, how did that coffee stay in that mug, even while you were in orbit? Tell me, how? <laughs> the Kerbals, they are so mad. <laughs> 
Anyway, Acroflog Venzar. Starry Moon, such a beautiful sight. Too bad it's not made of ice cream like Minmas. Wait, do you think Minmas is mint chocolate ice cream, Chip? If it is, I need to go there. That would be absolutely heavenly experience. Who cares if we have to take our helmets off to eat it? It's mint chocolate chip. Anyways, don't let the Kerbal Quest series interrupt your tutorial series. And keep talking ab And keep... Oh, you keep talking about it. <laughs> Smiley face. Love ya. No problem. She goes on to say fancy words for opposite. For someone who barely knows English. Contrast. Converse. Reverse. Contrary, contrary, different, polar, opposing, divergent, dissimilar, inverse, antipode, and antony. Yes. <laughs> Some people will try and look for opposite, opposite words to do opposite or similar words to opposite, not opposite words. <laughs> opposite words to opposite would be similar. <laughs> but there you go. Someone who hasn't got English knows. Anyway, these are the Kerbals. Ashman plays Kerman. And yes, I did install the prop mods that someone suggested. I couldn't find the uh, thing, but I did uh, something you asked me for. Probably a split or something, I can't remember. <laughs> but they did have shades, so that's where I've added to all the Kerbals. One of them has a Moby glass. <laughs> I thought it would look cool. Because you can always get one of those notes. And last is Lanel Kerman. And Ashman Play says you should try to deorbit the man and make it hit Kerman. Yeah, I tried it with a cheat. It doesn't work. The planets don't hit each other, don't have collisions for each other. And last comment ZYM3X. YouTube is recommended recommending this content to me. Hmm, interesting. That was the last video where we landed the two rovers. And who is this? Thurman Minecraft 72, other Minecrafter 72. Yes, we landed two rovers, and I just someone said just to make a base, and I thought we'll have more than one rover. And here we have the biggest mistake, Kerman. And he has a bubble helmet. Oh, cool! I love that prop mod. They need to add a bit more to it. You know, a few more. Things that we can dress our Kerbals up in. But let's get all the Kerbals together. That's what I'm trying to do by here. And I don't know why I left this footage in. Normally I would cut this stuff out. Well, as we move in all the Kerbals for a photo shoot. Don't worry, there are a few more Kerbals to come. Let's talk about a different game. What? Why are you playing KSP? Are you mad? We are KSP enthusiasts. You watching you for your KSP exploits. Exploits. Uh, um, is that right? Exploits? Is that the right term? <laughs> but anyway, let's talk a bit about Elite, which is looking cool at the moment. Update 2.4 is coming. It's called The Return of the Thar Guides. Anybody who played the old game Elites will know that there were aliens, such as this guy here, C. Zane Kerman. No, he's not an alien, but he is a cool Kerbal. And let's get... He hasn't got any glasses. You'll have to knit someone else's. Grab them from his helmet. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> as he swaps helmet in the middle of zero... Uh, zero atmosphere. <laughs> yes, the Thar guys have returned. In fact, I think this is going to be much more interesting. Because it means you can... Or at least will be able to interact with the aliens. Shooting them. Or save them. Anyway, this is Gabe M. Kerman. Welcome back to the fold. Anyway, if you want to be Kerbal, don't forget to write Kerbal in your comment. Otherwise, I will not find your comment through the filtering I do. And if you like this video, crank that like button like an NGD. You can just click the subscribe if you want. And hopefully we'll be having the tutorials and that up sometime. I plan to do them today as I'm recording this. Anyway, I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer. And I'll see you in space. Or probably on Earth, because that's where I can look out the arm. <laughs>